What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. This one we're going to revisit Emma 2.0, uh, do a cooling system flush and fix the, the leak on the intake, and then a bunch of other TLC maintenance. So this is the rig that we picked up out in Las Vegas and road tripped home. Me, Jen, and Gus, it's a great time. And you can see the rust is already kind of changing over now that it's back on the wet coast you know the things we get a lot more rain out here uh so gonna have to eventually do something i know people aren't a big fan of uh patina and she does really deserve a, a paint job but anyway let's let's see if this fires up and then get started on the the main problem the, the cooling system leak and then we'll just see how things progress got a bunch of parts new gaskets and such hear that pump coming on Oh yeah, that, uh, that's some reliability right there. Sounded like a healthy Chevy 350. Yeah. Brake's a little touchy from sitting. You can see I'm enjoying the new open concept garage. It's uh, open air, it's nice. But yeah, hopefully have that up by the end of the week is the plan. And we'll see how smooth that all goes. Yeah, so we just gotta pop this intake off. I saw a few comments in the first video about the pinstriping on this. They were saying the back panels must have been replaced, but that's not the case. You can see, I mean, the red was there at some point, but something with the sun fading it, you know, the red came off and it turned blue. So like you can even see there's, Remnants of the red there and and right here. So I'm yeah, I don't know. That's just what the, the tape looks like when the sun sun rotted. I, I don't know why it only did it on the back, but unless somebody hit it with some kind of I, I don't know. You guys might know better than me. This is all from the, the hailstorm. Looks like sap on there, but it really is just chipping away at the haze. Now the leak is up top between the heads and the manifold. Hopefully it doesn't mean this aluminum manifold's all corroded and pitted. And start by dreaming this. I tell you, it is lots of fun going to look for everything in this pile of, of uh, rubbish. Cannot get the garage built soon enough. Where's my deep pan? Oh, there it is. It's full of junk. Mm. Okay. It's cool and super nasty. Actually, it Oh yeah, I forgot how much water I put in this system. That's the other big reason we're uh, we're doing this, because on the trip, you know, it, was, it was real low, and we just filled it with water because we thought the leak was worse than it really was. I'm gonna go ahead and drain the block too. Oh, must be clogged. There it is. And the passenger side, which has a sensor, coolant sensor on it, also clogged. I don't know why I'm even catching it, it's pretty much just straight water. Well, that's the first time in a while that I've pulled the cap off and seen quite a bit of corrosion. It's, uh, you know, I've seen cars sit for 20, 30 years and there's nothing in there. Like, look at this tip is actually, uh, where the rotors will burn up. Here's a better look at it. Yeah, you definitely get a new cap and rotor on it. Didn't mean to drip any water in there, but we're due for an oil change anyway. Very healthy looking otherwise. I'm actually surprised it has as much sludge in these ports with the TBI. 
injection. Look how small the cooling ports are on this compared to like a big block. But anyway, I will soak up the rest in here, cover this, and then clean this really good, spending extra time on it. Here's the brake where it was leaking. And the gasket actually looks like it just kind of deteriorated apart. And over on the intake, yeah, it doesn't look like too much corrosion. Get this cleaned up and be good to go. I don't have my air compressor set up, but we can hit it with a, a light duty wire wheel lightly. You don't want to go crazy on this aluminum. Now we got some light pitting around the jackets, but totally usable. Uh, that's, normally I would use a 3M roll lock disc to clean these off instead of a wire wheel, but the, the good thing about the wire wheel is it, it does tend to expose the, the pitting a little bit better. Uh, you know, so honestly we'll probably put a little bit of the right stuff silicone around this gasket just to be safe. And I know sometimes people frown on that, but if you've been in the industry a while, then you know it's better safe than sorry. Let's say we got that clean enough, hit it with some super clean and scrubbed it and pressure washed it. And you know, really this should probably be sandblasted, but good enough, we'll hit it with some black paint call the day. Also the, the EGR ports were completely blocked in there too. We got the ports all cleaned up, which took longer than I would like to say. And now it's time to you know, cover this up and take the valve covers off. You see, this has got the same like really baked on sludge that doesn't even pressure wash off we'll have to you know, i'd like to give these a paint job too giving her all the loves although it is so darn nice out today that i might have to take a break at some point and go enjoy the nice weather you know anybody can slap gaskets on the hard part is cleaning everything up and being neat about it. That is the most time consuming part there is with any kind of gasket replacements. Down there. It's already got kind of newer looking gaskets. Yeah, these aren't so bad, but we're gonna replace them because they were leaking. These are now ready to hit with some paint. Uh, I was just going through my paint bin and it doesn't seem we have any high temp black except for this old stuff from uh, probably when I was a teenager and it's all clumpy coming out. Now let's run to the store. engine enamel, satin black. That'll do it. You guys know I usually don't do much cosmetic, but in this case, you know, what the heck. Why not? And while that's all drying, I think we'll go take the Gus man to the park. Because you've been a good boy all day, just taking a nap on the couch, right? Yeah. Don't you sniffing? He says, where are we going? This is not the normal spot. Where to? It's the dog park, Gus. Go have fun with him. <laughs> Getting their sniffs in. <laughs> oh man, everybody's crowding you, Gus, huh? All right, guys, this is better change of pace for you. Go for a little walk through the woods. Sometimes the dog parks, he gets, uh, he gets a little shy, you know. Takes him a while to warm up there. Oh, this is more your style, huh? Oh yeah, he's a happy pup. What you digging for? Who's over there? 
You hear noise? What did you do? I'll say these came out pretty nice considering and it's only been drying for like an hour and the paint's already you can't even chip it with your finger no i didn't go crazy clean the insides out just uh, the big chunky stuff on these intake gaskets i am going to go ahead and use permatex the right stuff over what they gave me they gave the felpro gray rtv uh, but I prefer this. I've had just great luck with it. And so if, since there's a little bit of pitting on the head, I'll do a tiny little smear around each of these cooling ports and then a tiny little smear intakes over there, but on that, that pitted part. And you know, some people say, oh, you got to put them in dry, but no, trust me, I've, I've done it. I've done it both ways and I've never, ever had a leak doing a smear of right stuff. Very small, not, not a bunch, tiny little smear. So anyway, that's uh, nothing really to see here. I just went a little OCD, cleaned everything up. These even have right stuff in between the copper gaskets. That way we won't have any leaks. That's what a smear looks like. Just enough to fill in the tiny little uh, corrosion crevices. And then uh, of course on the block you do, it's like an eighth inch bead or so. It's all that dirt in your mouth. The next day, we're ready to fill her on up. It's always a good idea to let the silicones cure overnight if you have the time, but you can torque and go. It's never an issue, even if you don't have the time. Uh, so we're gonna be using nothing but the best 50-50 Peak antifreeze. Uh, they have actually sponsored this video, so thank you very much uh, to Peak for sending me a bunch of coolant and some other stuff I'll show you later. Now, they do sell a, a flush additive for this for cleaning out all the the uh, sediments and, and stuff in the system but everybody's gotta yeah i don't think flushing a cooling system is a good idea unless you have an issue you're trying to fix like a clogged heater core uh, a bunch of the the rows are clogged in the rad and it's overheating but if you just have this this light build up throughout the system like it's not harming anything you saw how clean the water came out when is mostly clean water off the bottom of the red rad when we drained it uh, you go disturbing all that and then you're gonna end up with a clogged rad or a leaking water pump i mean the way i see it is all this this gunk is what's holding the system together unless you're having a problem i don't recommend it. it's just like with an engine flush uh if you have stuck lifters and stuff that you're trying to fix yeah maybe so but otherwise leave all the sludge right where it is guys that's my personal opinion that being said i do recommend flushing the system with a garden hose just to get all the loose sediments out what you can uh, people will say oh don't use garden hose water because it has minerals in it but hey listen this is all rusted minerals and calciums in here to begin with so unless you have like a perfectly clean system and a newer car yeah maybe don't run a garden hose in that, but we're gonna run this, then distilled water, then coolant. Here we go. And yes, I'm flushing this all right onto the ground because uh, this has already got straight water in it to begin with. So if you have antifreeze in your system, definitely catch that in the pan. You see it's coming out like a very, very slight brown. Now we're gonna just run many gallons through this and then uh, we'll start it up and run it with that too. So flush out the heater core hoses till it comes out clear. Got the thermostat out right now, so we're running it through the intake that's flowing down into the block, coming out both sides so it's clear. Once you're all done with the flushing, leave the drains out and use uh, shop air to blow in, try to get all the residual municipal water out. Also, you can use your mouth and just you know, blow it down onto the spark plug wires, <laughs> uh, but empty out the, what's in the, the heater core and the whole system. Now we can fill her up with a few gallons of distilled water, dollar a gallon at Walmart. And this is essentially water that has been evaporated or distilled so it doesn't have any minerals or deposits in it. That fired right up. Uh, I got to check the timing now too. I did mark the distributor when we took it out, but I'll verify. Seems to be close enough for now though, so I will let that get up to operating temperature. Top this back off with distilled water once we get all the air bubbles out. See, it already looks like mud water in there. With the flow coming across that rad, the thermostat out, 
water pump's going good. Uh, true story, I used to have a 97 Chevy S10 with the 4.3 in it. You know, those had the deck school in them and such a, a sludged up system. I mean, 10 times worse than this. And I was having some overheating problems. So I went ahead, did the whole flush, probably like five, six times on that. And then every day for a month it took, I would fill it up with water in the morning, drive it 15 minutes to work, drain it at work, fill it back up with water, use just regular water. And it just kept coming out muddy no matter what until it finally one day came out pretty clean. I put antifreeze in it. And sure enough, I ended up having a water pump leak shortly after that. Of course, that could have been just from running the water in there the whole time. Uh, you know, it doesn't have any lubricity. No leaks so far. We're gonna go rip her down the highway, see if I can get a coolant temperature sensor, because that one's broken off up top. And, you know, put the thermostat out, disturb the rest of everything in the system so we can drain it one last time. And did set the timing too, back to zero degrees base timing. It, it wasn't far off, pretty much right there. What do you think, Mr. Gus? Yeah, this thing is a nice cruiser. Look at this, we parked right next to a Scottsdale with the same paint job. I'll trade you, hey man. Man, I thought I recognized that truck. How's right. it going? How right. you been? How's now look been? at yeah. that paint job, that's beautiful. Uh, These are matching. Yeah. <laughs> what are the odds? Hey man, love the bulldog up there, man. I love the bulldog on the, the yeah the Mac Mac bulldog. Hi, right, I'll see you. You guys might remember him from the breaking down trailers video. They had the sensor for the intake, and I grabbed a filter too. Ten bucks, can't beat it. Oh yeah, built up good pressure. No leaks. This one was kind of filthy. Packed with that desert silt. Ooh. Yeah, we'll let it cool down a little bit. <laughs> While we wait, we'll spill the oil. We should definitely do for that after the long trek home. You guys know I usually rock Rotella, but somebody actually sent uh, some Pennzoil 1030 high mileage, three gallons of it. Uh, why not use this? Thank you very much to whoever sent this over. I'll definitely put it all to good use. Should be able to get this depressurized now. Still a little hot, but... We got all the water drained out of the system. I put the bottle back in. I cleaned this out and siliconed the whole seam because it had like a couple small weeps. Uh, Could have just spent, you know, 80 or 100 bucks on a new one, but. Oh man, this old sensor seized in here. Probably should have removed it when the intake was off. I got the breaker bar. There she is. And now the rewarding part of putting a brand new Peak 5050 coolant in there. This is uh, all vehicles. Never had a problem with it before. Here we go. Oh, doesn't that feel good? Oh, wait a second. We'll put our Lyle funnel on and all of a sudden things are even more satisfying. Yes. There's three gallons. I'll start it up, let it burp out. So this is a, they advertise this is 10 times more scale inhibitors, 10 years, 3, 300,000 miles. Well, that's burp.
surfing out. Something else that's been bothering me is these stick-on stripes, uh, strips, you know, they're like holding water behind them and I assume you could just get new ones of these, but I'll keep, keep the old ones for now and we'll get that off somehow. But yeah, I mean, in, the, in this climate, it's just holding there water behind it and there we go and i don't know how well you can see it but that original paint looks so nice that's why they put these here is just to hide the you know, that strip it wouldn't look right at all without it i guess it would look okay but you see how all the, the muck and stuff is kind of getting behind there same up here this pinstripe is just to hide the two different uh, paint lines That's done. The coolant bottle is leaking though, unfortunately. Got that new tank on order from eBay, 80 bucks. Again, should have just done that to begin with, but you know, to boost the morale, throw some wipers and fill up the washer bottle. Because you know, that makes everything all better. Unless this has a hole in it too. Oh, tell me that does have a hole. You know. I got lucky. It was just a hose off on the back. Did you know Peak made wipers too? Silicone Platinums. Perfect fit, although we do need a new windshield too because of a crack. Oh, and something else you guys said in the first video was to ditch this uh, mat that for noise and heat. And uh, yeah, but like, I guess it could be a fire hazard, especially once all the dust gets in there. Uh, I mean, the way, way it's hanging off, it's certainly a, a hazard either way, getting sucked into the, the belt and everything else. Let's pop that on off. Let's see what it does if we put some fire to it. You gotta figure uh, if you got oil all soaked into it too, or gas ever, then it'd be really flammable. Yeah, not, not really, even with the dust in there, it's, you know, it's fiberglass. It's, meant to be fire retardant but you know if it gets soaked in oil and gas it's another story nice and fresh under here i'll have to see about ordering a new one of those next is gonna be the brake fluid we'll get jen out here help us flush it um i know really exciting stuff guys right but we're just you know we're giving all the, the maintenance love here Now the typical way I flush or maintain the brake fluid is you know, drain, clean out the reservoir, and then crack each bleeder open, starting passenger rear, this one, this one, this one, all the way up until the front. Uh, however, Jen said she'd offer me a special deal. Special brake bleeder in the house. You know, five, five pumps per wheel for only a uh, motorcycle ride later, right? Is that the deal? Sure. Don't go pressing it yet. Let me get down there. Half a chicken sandwich if you want that. Now. Oh, thanks. How long has it been sitting there? <laughs> like two hours. Give her like five steady pumps. Yep, just like that. Full strokes, baby. I think Gus found a stinky spot. Yeah. What? Yeah. <coughs> Okay, hold on, one more wheel. Oh, Gus stinks really bad. You let him in the truck? He hopped up in here and he smells. Okay. He just gave you a bath. So we did, what was that, 20 pumps per wheel or something? Real dark, nasty fluid came out. Yeah, that looks good. Gus, 
Get out of there. Come on. Let's go. Get out of the truck. Come on, boy. You got that. It's a new tailpipe. Rusting through on the back, surprisingly. But I figured we'd put it up in there real quick. Just take a quick gander and uh, grease the chassis too. Everything quick. Quick, quick. So like this rust, this is all new. It wasn't this way when we bought it. That's just from doing the, the brake fluid flushing. Come on, have you ever seen a Chevy frame that looked that way? I don't know why I'm just so shocked by these, these desert vehicles, but it's immaculate. I mean, the only thing that would be better is if it was a three quarter ton. Yeah, got a little, little tail shot leak out of the transmission. I mean, it could just be the pan. You never really know. Could have been coming up from the, the lifter valley up top there. When you drive down the road, it just kind of blows everywhere. I got the uh, collector gaskets on the way because those are leaking. But it's no problem because just a few nuts that aren't rusty. I stopped over here to dump my old oil. This is uh, all the brake fluid and motor oil and everything else. Dump it in here for recycling. Swapping out the spark plugs. Never a big fan of having these made in Germany Bosch Platinums. Not that they're a bad plug, they just they belong in a VW, not a, a Chevy. Now I got some AC Delco CR43TS made in China. I think these used to be made in USA. And then I got the exhaust collector gaskets made in USA. Let's look at those. They're like graphite infused. Gap to met 35 thou. Copper anti seize on the threads. Good to go. And then I'll Keep these in my spare spark plugs drawer, because they're still good. Here's a look at the old ones. They kind of falling apart. And freshies with graphite on them. I'll uh, anti-seize up those bolts too, and no more exhaust leaks going down the highway. No more exhaust smell in the cabin, should I say. Perfect fit. We're cruising this thing today and I uh, figured I'd bring the e-bike, do a little exploration. Parked behind this, uh, the Bolero. This used to be an AMF, but totally digging the new paint job. Oh, about to get hit by a car. Anyway, right behind here, I noticed on Google Maps, there's a good amount of trails. So I kind of want to see see what they lead to. What's back here? There's uh, people behind, back you know, their houses back up to here, which is pretty sweet. Looks like uh, full dump trash too back here. Definitely a killer spot to bring the dual sport back to. Figure I'd scope it out on the bike first, but these are well traveled trails. All hidden gems, you never know where you run into them. Google Maps is the best place to, to find them, or any satellite view for that matter. Gotta be a creek back here or something like like wetlands because I can't see any other, any other reason this has not been built on. Yep, yeah, because it's all wetlands down here. Probably turns into a mud pit when it's raining. Stop, Let's get a little side detour. Go stay strapped or get clapped. Anyway, the reason we're taking a ride is to go drop this off at Jen's place. Oh, yes, the car storage lot. Yeah, I figured we swap the Suburban out for the Torino. Nice Memorial Day weekend cruiser. Give her a little love. Storage ambulance. Uh, the plan for this never came to fruition yet, anyway. 
So i uh, kind of been using, well, my idea is to use Gen ZR as a storage lot for vehicles, but this darn shed's in the way. And I have a feeling if we move it, it's going to fall apart. Ow. Uh, because there's a gopher, groundhog living under there. And yeah. And that's going to wrap things up on the Suburban for now. Uh, really glad to get the water out of the cooling system, clean that out, and get Peak in there. You know, thanks very much, Peak, for sponsoring this video. So we, we made some headway, but obviously it's going to need a lot more. I'm starting to think I might have a problem. You know, I, I, I love to hold on to these, but probably be a good idea to pass this on to somebody else who's going to bring it the rest of the way, give it the paint job, and, and give it the TLC that it deserves and needs. Kind of my plan that I, I have with this is for me and Jen, if we're going to do another fly and drive, I'm thinking, why don't we just load this up with their gear and tools and then ship it out? You, you could send this down to Texas for probably 300 bucks. It's like, why are we flying in, getting a rental car, having to buy tools and dealing with all that? when we could just send this down there. So that might be in the future, unless one of you guys are very interested and you want to throw me an offer. You know, I'm not going to sell it for two grand. To me, it's, it's worth more than that. Let me know what you think it's worth down in the comments. I mean, there's no, no rust. And that is just priceless. I was even talking to Dalton over at Pole Barn Garage about maybe shipping it out to him because he's the best darn body guy I know. If you haven't seen his channel, check him out. PBG, Pole Barn Garage, he's the man. <clears throat> so that's a possibility too. But for now, the Torino is calling me and boy, look at the sun shining on her. It's funny, a guy actually pulled up as I was doing swapsies here and he goes, hey, is that what's been hiding under the cover? And he was, he was just admiring that wonderful work of art car i know some of you guys think the, the mid 70s cars are ugly but i'm probably forgetting to mention some things but anyway let's go cruise the torino now i know intruder intruder her head off. you don't like this car huh I know sometimes these videos jump around a bunch, so thanks very much everyone for tuning in. A uh, big thank you to all the members of the channel, appreciate the support. And everyone watching in the States, don't forget to fly your flag Monday and honor those fallen soldiers who have given the ultimate sacrifice for our freedom here. So God bless America and see you guys very soon.